Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Alex here. Today, I'm gonna to tell you about Kotlin. Kotlin is this pretty cool, newish sort of programming language that Google's really been pushing lately. It's pretty much like Zoomer Java. So imagine Java, but there's a lot less verbose syntax to it. And it has a lot of these new features that other languages like Rust or Go have, or so I've noticed. And it can also compile to native, which is pretty cool. So you can run either like the JVM or compile it down to like actual machine code, um, in which case it has targets for like Android, iOS, and a bunch of other platforms. All in all, it's a pretty cool little language. So I'm going to go ahead and start showing all of you how to program in Kotlin. Okay, let's bring on the computer view. Okay, so before I get started in Kotlin today, I'm gonna go ahead and write a very simple program just in Java. So here I have my main.java file and I've already put it inside the package folder. So we're gonna call this package game. Wait, did I say package folder? I meant the game folder. Okay, so first off, we're going to make a game class and we're gonna do all the stuff you would normally have to do in Java to start this up, all the boilerplates and we're gonna have it print out some message. Simple enough, right? So this is your quintessential hello world in Java, um, except we're actually separating out to a variable. So that's all fine and good, but what happens if this isn't actually message? Well, it turns out this is also going to compile. It'll just print out null. But what if we want to know the length of the message that you're trying to print out? In this case, in this very weird case that would never actually pop up, uh, but it's just an example, because this is null, if we try accessing this length message, sorry, this length function of a null variable, well, you'll see, but it's going to give us a null pointer exception. So let's actually go ahead, if I can type it right, uh, and type out, let's go ahead and compile our Java program and check out this null pointer exception. Except first we actually have to create bin. There we go. Ooh. Once again, I've misnamed the file. There we go. Okay, cool. And now we're just going to go ahead and run Java class path game and sorry, class path bin. And this is called game dot game. Cool. So this gives us a null pointer exception, just as I said before. Now I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this program in Kotlin just to show all of you some of the advantages Kotlin has over Java. First off, one of these cool things, we can actually get rid of this class here. And we're just gonna have a main function. And there's a bit of a different syntax in terms of showing what the variable type is. Um, it's a little people who have used like, I first saw this in action script. So to me, this is a action script thing. Um, not necessarily, but that's just the first place where I saw it. And we don't actually need all these semicolons. So my ID is going off the charts just because it's still things we're working in Java. Let's go ahead and stop confusing it for a moment here. There we go. So this is Kotlin. Now let's go ahead and try compiling this program here. It's gonna be pretty much the exact same as our Java C commands. And let me just double check, uh, it's main.kt now, but, and it takes a bit longer actually, but we see that you actually can't set this variable to null. One of the big features Colin has over Java is that it's designed to be null safe. So for one thing, by default, you can't set any variables to null. What you have to do is actually make it nullable by putting in this little question mark here. So if you ever use like Rust or they have this in every language, but there's a type called option. Um, and you, it's easy to sort of think of this as like a Kotlin option is at least how I think of it. But really they call it a quote unquote nullable type. 
Now, if you want to actually use this, what you're going to have to do is put this question mark after every time you access the variable. So that way, if it's null, whenever whatever you're trying to access it for, this entire statement will also return null instead of throwing some sort of error. So let's go ahead and compile this. And what do you know? It actually compiles successfully, which is pretty cool. Uh, so we're going to run it. Now, normally in Java, when you want to run something, you'd actually put the class name here. But uh, the cool thing about Kotlin is that here, I'll actually show you what it looks like. It's main kt .class. So they they name these class files after the name of the source file itself. And the reason why they do that is because in Kotlin, as I've just shown with this main function here, you don't always need a class in a file. And in fact, you can have more than one top level entity inside a file in, in Kotlin. Um, it actually, in a lot of ways, it almost reminds me of like Pythonic Java, which is pretty interesting. Um, and if we go back here to our program, you'll see it return null, which is pretty cool. Okay, so we've, okay, so I've gone through and showed you all your very first Kotlin program and how to use like nullable types and classes functions and all that. So before we actually get too much further in, I'm gonna create a make file just to automate all of our compiling and all that. Cool, so now whenever we want to run our Kotlin code, uh, we'll just go ahead and run make and make run. And what is that? Okay, so there's an error somewhere in here. Let's go ahead and check inside bin slash game. Hmm. So it has main kt. Oh, here we go. That's better. You didn't want the t to also be capital. I make that mistake sometimes. And just double checking. There we go. Cool. So it returns us null as it should. So now I'm going to show you constructors and all that. So let's go ahead and create a our first class here in Kotlin. And so let's just make sure, no, our make file is going to have to compile every Kotlin file we have inside our game directory. So let's go ahead and get rid of that for right now. Our package here is also under game and we're going to call this class enemy. Now the cool thing, and I actually found myself trying to do this a lot in Java, even though you can't, you can actually create, you can actually put the constructor in with the class definition right here in Kotlin, which is actually pretty cool. So we're gonna have some enemy class with a val name and string and val health of type int. So in Kotlin, they don't really use any primitives like lowercase int for integers. Everything is kind of a class type, which I mean, I can I can get behind that. That's actually pretty cool. Um, it saves a lot of like switching back and forth between like, oh, is this a primitive or a class like you have to do in Java? And actually, if you go back to main, you'll see there isn't even like, like they don't define arrays like this. They define arrays, it's its own little type, which is great. So everything's like a very nice, clean interface for the programmer to work with. Um, so what we have here inside our class definition is it tells you all the variables that you're gonna use in it. So we can actually define this int uh, block, an initialization block. Here's an enemy, and that's actually going to say it's called, and it kind of has the same string interpolation scheme as bash, which is probably my favorite, which is really cool. So we can just go ahead and say dollar sign, and then these, uh, what's it called? These are optional, the little curly brackets, but you know, if you're using an array or something, then you'll want them there. So I'm just going to leave them there for right now. Um, so we have our little initialization block. That's like the actual function body of the constructor. Um, so we go ahead and compile this. It'll create an enemy and do all that. Now we can also create secondary constructors, which you cannot use the val keyword inside of those, but you know, I'll show you what this is going to look like. And it's going to call this name and let's set default health to like 15 or something I don't know I'm feeling pretty good about that yeah so we're gonna do this so now you have just like in Java you can now do a different constructor where if you pass in just name it'll go through your primary constructor with health is 15 and name is whatever you passed in 
And this will still call your initialization block, which is pretty cool. Now, one other thing you might want to watch out for, something that tripped me up when I first started Kotlin, is I didn't know to put val here. So actually, you don't even need that. Um, and what we can say is this right here. And then we can just initialize it in our init block. So there's a lot of small particulars like this in Kotlin, which is my least favorite thing about the language, but just bear with me. So inside a constructor, you can declare one of these parameters with the val keyword, and that'll say, okay, make this variable essentially like a instance variable. It'll essentially do this entire line for you automatically. Now, if you don't have that val keyword, then basically you're telling the constructor, hey, don't set this up for me as a instance variable, but you can do it. You can still do it manually if you want to, like I am, but then you have to say like this dot whatever equals whatever inside your init block. Um, so just remember that. So now that we've created our enemy class, let's go ahead and create a variable for one. Now in Kotlin, there's two variable creation keywords. There's val, which is a immutable type and var, which is a mutable variable. So we're, we're not gonna be changing this guy. So let's just say even, you know what? Here, so we're gonna say val e, we'll create an enemy and we'll call it a goblin. And we'll have it, we'll give it like 15 health. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and say, yeah. And we'll go ahead and say how much health it has. And let's run this. Yeah, there we go. Still prints out null. Oop. Still prints out null because we haven't changed that. It prints out here's an enemy, it's called and it gives its name. And it even says how much health it has, which is pretty cool. So we've gone through and done all of this. Now, one little thing you might've noticed, in every other variable we've created, we actually put the typing of it like what I was saying about action script earlier uh, at the end of it with this weird little syntax. I'm more of a Java C type syntax person here. We actually didn't put that there. The cool thing about Kotlin is that it also has type inference, um, but then you can't change the type of that variable after you've declared it to be inferred by a certain type. Uh, just want to let you know. Okay. So now we have most of our basics covered, but as you would use in any sort of Java program, how are we going to define arrays and maps and all of that? Well, let's go ahead and do some of that right now. So we're actually going to do it. Let's see. Yeah, let's create loots and that'll be an array of strings. So loot is going to equal, you can just say array of. And then we can just put our list in here. So in Java, you would have had like the square brackets or sorry, not square brackets, the curly brackets. I was thinking of JavaScript, um, but here we can actually just put this. So maybe your goblin is going to drop a sword and some gold coins and maybe, I don't know, a heart. I mean, I mean not like a gross one. I mean like a Zelda one. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And we're going to define a little method for this guy here. So we're going to say, you know, once you've defeated this little guy, um, it's going to say, so we're going to do a for loop for var. And remember to make it var because this variable has to be mutable for var x in zero dot dot loop dot length and minus one because it's actually going to be inclusive in Kotlin. It, that's another thing that I'm kind of like, eh, you know. Yeah, we're going to use our string interpolation here and we're going to say loot x and that should be all we have to say. Okay, so we've done that. Let's go ahead and run e dot die the function and let's compile and run. Bruh. Okay. So we have a couple of errors here. For one thing, you don't actually need to put, where'd it go? Oh, here we go. You don't actually need to put the var keyword there. And also this is supposed to be size. I'm 
a bit too used to Java. <laughs> oh, looks like I'm also a bit too used to Node.js. We don't need those weird, what's it called, string quotes there. Okay, <laughs> sorry, I've been programming in a lot of different languages today. Okay, cool. So just like I said, it's actually inclusive. So, you know, trust me when I say go to the size minus one. Uh, this says it drops everything. Sword, gold coin, gold coin, and a heart. So, that's pretty good. Now, let's take a look at maps real quick. So, we're going to say val m is just a map of. And then we can say, yeah, let's actually... Let's put some Pokemon in our dungeon, why not? So we have low level, medium, and a boss. I've been playing Pokemon Pearl, so we'll make Palkia the boss. And as for medium, I don't know, maybe like a, what's a medium Pokemon, like a Bronzor? They're always annoying, they got like the psychic things. Um, so we're gonna say for entry in M, you're going to print N, print M, if I can speak correctly, M dot key, M dot value. Why did I do that? No, entry dot M, entry dot value. All right, let's go ahead and see what this does. Ah, uh, yes, I just used the wrong keyword. Kotlin has a lot of these, and I'm still not completely sure what all of them do. You want to use the two keywords, so let's go ahead and try this again. Okay, um, oh, wait, duh, because, so, we're trying to print out our values. We never really, did we actually ever... No, we never gave a two string for these enemies. So actually, instead, we could put entry.value.name. But to make our lives easier in the future, let's go ahead and use an object-oriented approach. <laughs> and we're actually just going to override this two string function. So the syntax for this, if you have a function that returns something other than the unit type, because I think they call it unit type, like an OCaml, as opposed to void, like in Java. Um, you're gonna put it at the end here, kind of like how Rust or Go do with their functions. And you have to use the override keyword because we actually are overriding this. Um, and we're just gonna have a return name, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and do this again. And it should actually give us the Pokemon names that we assign to these enemies. Yeah, there we go. It's called Magikarp, Bronzor, Palkia, awesome. Oh, no, that's just the constructors for them. Yes, but it still, it still calls them as it should, which is pretty cool. Okay, so lastly, what we're going to do with Kotlin is I'm going to show you some inheritance. Now, the cool thing with Kotlin, let's see, let's actually, and we're going we're gonna to create our whole package called enemies because I don't want to flood this main game package with a bunch of these guys. So we're actually going to edit make file. Um, I'm going to show you a cool little Linux shortcuts. This is like the double star. This means take all the recursive directories inside of game uh, and take all the files inside of them as well. So this is like one command to compile all of our Kotlin files real quick. Now we're going to say, let's create a boss type. So this is package game.enemies. And... I don't know, we don't want to move this. So, class boss. Yes, we're going to have val name string. Um, and this is actually going to extend over enemy. Wait, why did I put this semicolon here? See, I am way too used to Java. Now, we're going to go ahead and have this. And we're going to override our die function. So when you kill the boss, you win, basically. Now, this is looking pretty good. These are all the changes I want to make, actually. Yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. 
these are all the changes I want to make. So let's go ahead and try this. We'll actually, no. Yes. We're not even going to run it yet. We're just going to call make. Okay. So we're getting a few errors here, and I kind of wanted to highlight some of this stuff. So we're getting this type is final, and it cannot be inherited from. And that's pointing to enemy. Now, there's a keyword in Kotlin called open. We need to define this class as open before you can actually inherit from it. And we probably do the same for the string as well. Or sorry, this function. Um, because we do get the same error essentially for this function. So let's go ahead and run that. Okay, cool. So we got rid of just two errors right there, which is pretty awesome. Right, so we don't actually need to we really shouldn't be using the val keyword here because we're trying to create a new instance variable called name, but boss's super type enemy, if you remember, already has an instance variable of that name and that same type. So we don't use val there. We're going to actually, uh, we're gonna sort of manually set it by creating a secondary constructor and call super, just as you would in Java. And it looks like you have to call super because of this error right here. So let's go ahead and do that. Where did it go? Ah, here we go. Yeah, so we're actually not even going to have a constructor right up here. And there we go, that should work. Nah, nice, everything compiles. So let's go ahead and we're going to import game.enemies.boss here, if I can spell. Actually, it looks kind of French. Maybe I'm just supposed to speak French instead. We, okay. And we're going to say, L B equals boss and B dot die. Oh, right. I forgot to give it a name. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and call it Bowser. This is a very weird dungeon crawling game. There we go. Cool. So we have now gone over all these little concepts in Kotlin. Um, I myself am actually still kind of new to this language, but I just want to put out a kind of like a good intro to Kotlin video, um, at least just for me to refer back to when I'm having trouble with it. And yeah, so these are all the concepts I'm going to be going over in Kotlin in this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Okay, and that is everything I'm going to teach all of you today about programming in Kotlin. Now, before I sort of end the video, I have a couple like channel updates. Um, you might have noticed I haven't put out a video in like five weeks. Also, I'm missing all of my hair. Uh, <laughs> that is because I started up with exams like five weeks ago and I was like, okay, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like put out a different video every week. I got focused on exams. That's great. As for the other four weeks, um, I don't know what happened the other four weeks. Well, <laughs> I had to focus on my company, my clients. I was trying to enjoy spring break and all that. Um, not to mention there was a pandemic that happened. So that, um, yeah, everything is kind of screwed up now. Um, but also, I think what I'll be doing on the channel from now on is just putting out one video, a more substantial video every couple of weeks instead of trying to grind out like a video each week um where like you know that video might not be a lot more lazily produced and just like not as good concepts um so i think I'll, i think i'll go with that where i put out like a much more substantial video every couple of weeks and that's why this video had so many more examples covered so much more in kotlin than like all my other what is videos have is because i was able to just put more time into it and i wasn't like rushing to get it out now as for content Mostly what I'll be doing in order to just kind of like keep up with all my scheduling still is I'll probably mostly put out videos based around whatever current project or current thing I'm learning either in school or as part of my company. 
so the reason why I decided to put out what is Kotlin is because I'm actually working on some custom accounting software for LugoCorp. Um, and I'm writing in Kotlin for a couple of reasons, but then yeah, apart from that, I just wanted, I've been wanting to learn it for a little while. It has some pretty cool features that I would have loved to use in Java. So that, that, that's pretty much why I'm, I made this video about Kotlin. Now, I think I've covered pretty much all the updates I was going to give in this video. So uh, yeah, I guess we'll just end it there. So thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Okay, there we go, that's good.